time. Okay, so within the the entire you know uh, political system, there's a place for what we call public you know opinion, and and that is what we call public sphere. And uh, if you read, you know, uh, Jagamas, it talks about you know a kind of you know space that you know private people. Or uh, if I say private people, I mean the ordinary, you know, Ghanaians express, you know, their opinion or their view on on issues, and that those issues could be diverse. You know, they could express opinions on religion, on politics, on economic, on social, you know, uh, issues, etc. Now we're going to look at that character of public sphere and how that had actually transformed over the years, all right? Uh, the history of it. And we can actually, you know, kind of go into the now and the future, how we think public sphere is gonna actually shape up. All right, so uh, you probably had come across, you know, what would mean by public opinion or public sphere, who can actually give us some kind of understanding uh, before we go into the presentations themselves. Who can tell us? What do we mean by public sphere or public opinion? Anas. Um, okay, so public opinion is when um individuals, okay, or the people share their views and expressions on social issues or discourse. Mm -hmm. So this is mostly seen in um TV stations. So they use um phone in and then um, um voice recording, this like they go around to take people's ideas or views of a particular subject. And then we tend to um, let, uh, um, learn a new media that the media plays a significant role here because the media sometimes allow us, okay, they are doing their um, studios or in-section programs for the individuals to share their opinion of a particular subject here. Excellent, excellent, fantastic. All right, who else want to share a view? Okay, uh, Joel. Joel, yes, do you, do you have a brother called Emmanuel Bansa? Yes, a cousin. It's a cousin, right? Yeah, he's with the yeah. is it African Union? He does a lot of posts. From hey, no, that 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 is not him. There's no him. Oh, okay. It's not him, or say. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? Why is it? <laughs> nah, why? No, but, no, but it's, because John is it's... not correct. John can't have a bad idea. <laughs> oh, you know him, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no. I've heard I've heard the name before, but, but I'm saying I don't know now him. knows the other brother that you're talking about. So she's just jealous of me. And the way the way <laughs> she's happy, it looks like he was no, she was no, dating no. there before. Okay, so so, yeah, so so public opinion is when um the public share their opinions of, about an issue being brought uh, on board. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, Evelyn. Evelyn, let's hear you. Yes, so, so public sphere has to do with the fact that people share their... Hello, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you, Evelyn. Yes, yeah, so people share their opinion, but it is not through, yes, it is not through an identifiable platform. Mm. Okay, it's an imaginary um, platform or something. That space given to them is not really identified. Mm -hmm. So they share their views and then their opinions there. Unlike the public opinion where you can share your views and opinions with the public sphere it doesn't have an identifiable space where people share their opinion but with a public opinion we can get um, people's opinion through the uh, the media and others yeah okay a uh, great point um who else who else can identify some of the variables or attributes of uh, public opinion or public sphere Julius. Um, yeah, doc. Um, I would want to. I would also want to say that um, public sphere is more or less like a platform that um, gives the people or the public the 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 the, the vacuum or the opportunity to come together and um, discuss and then deliberate on 
national issues and then finally form a, a general opinion or a public opinion. Yeah. Okay, great. So the, the two, the two you know, uh, terminologies actually you know, go hand in hand. The, the sphere is the space and the opinion is the product or the function of that particular space. You know, as you know, uh, the the uh, what do you call the expert actually put it, and we're going to look at the various constructs of it. What or how is an opinion a public opinion? All right, and how is an opinion not a public opinion? And you know, other factors. So, um, we we actually looking at it from uh, the media transformation. I mean from the perspective of developing countries and how you know, that transformation has actually you know, uh, occurred in, in the last you know, few years since Ghana's you know, transition to you know, uh, the fourth you know, uh, democratic you know, constitution. Uh, so what is public opinion and how do you identify one? Uh, obviously, as most of you have said, we said the goal is to understand the theoretical approaches towards the phenomenon of public sphere and analyze its transformation. So Jürgen uh, Habermas actually talks about a forum in which the private people come together to form a public, ready themselves to compel public authority to legitimize itself before public opinion. So with the first part of the you know, the explanation or the definition of the public opinion. The assumption is that people from their own will, and when we say private people, we're talking about individual people, people not put together, you know, by someone or not compelled by someone, but out of their own will, own volition, they come together to express their views on certain issues in order that they could compel public authority to legitimize, when we say legitimize, we're saying that they should prove themselves you know, worthy of that particular you know, uh, position. So that's what we're looking at. So we're looking at the situation that people are not compelled, all right? And people are out of their own interest in the camera to speak on issues you know, without any compulsion and without fear, you know, but that opinion or that view should be some sort of a generalized, you know, it's a kind of a generalized view or the product of which is a generalized perspective that it is hoped that could legit, I mean, could compel public authorities to take action, for example. Uh, Sarah says, public opinion is the desire want and thinking of the majority of the people and the public sphere is the area where citizens come to get an exchange opinion regarding the public affairs. True. Okay. So the, the second component says the bourgeois public sphere may be conceived above all as the sphere of private people come together as a public. They soon claim the public sphere regulated from above against the public authorities themselves. The medium of this political confrontation was peculiar and without historical precedent. So at a time that the concept of public sphere was conceived, it is believed that it didn't happen before. It, it had no you know, precedent. And as we looked at you know, the tradition or the, the beginning and the evolution of politics, we realized or we actually discussed that there were two groups of people mainly. One which were the managers of capital or call them the owners of capital and the peasant workers who actually provided labor. Now, at a point, the two were in effect because one group thought that they were not being paid their due. And the other group thought that they were paying more than what they were being offered in terms of labor. So that confrontation you know, led to the formation of you know, the left and right political and ideological positions. Now, at the time of public sphere, 
as you know the the literature suggests the, the, the it was new it was almost like a dissenting you know views on national issues because as you know in in previous you know uh, years it was most countries were actually governed by what you call uh, monarchs, all right? They were more chieftaincy kind of ruling. And some of these kind of uh, uh, arrangements, some thought that they were put there by God, you know? They were, they were you know, uh, what do you call, naturally selected as leaders. And so you wouldn't have, you know, a space where people actually expressed concern, all right? That could actually be considered as a treason or a treasonable, uh, what do you call, offense, that you could actually be penalized for that. So people didn't have that, or the society didn't have that particular character uh, at, until what you know, Habermas you know, actually considered as public sphere, which in some of the literature they you know, attribute to you know, uh, Germany, for example, others, you know, they take the references from England, all right, as where public sphere actually emerged. So they say that when that, that behavior or when that you know, phenomenon started, there was no precedent you know, about that. There was no historical precedent. And then he went on to foment you know, the early beginnings of you know, uh, what they call political discourse. So if you look at the character of the public sphere, so the logic of the public sphere is independent of economic and political power, all right? Uh, that shows that for, for the public sphere to exist, the, it must exist without any influence. It must exist without any value sets, like constraints, all right? It must exist freely. So, well, we talk about as a public sphere, it's a sphere that has no constraint, has no power binding it, and people willingly, you know, engage in that particular, you know, uh, space. And it says the laws of the market are suspended as were well laws of the state, all right? So when you talk about laws of the market, we're looking at uh, the power, the economic power, all right, of the market, for example, if you have to engage in public sphere, that should not affect your job, for example, all right? Or that should not have any bearing on your ability to actually demand goods and services or supply goods and services. The loss of the market is demand and supply, all right? And it, it is that when you are engaged in the public sphere, these laws of the market must not exist or must not bind you know, on, on that activity that we call public sphere. And so are the laws of the state. For example, you know, the, the idea that perhaps maybe uh, women or men, or, I mean, most cases earlier on, it was women more than men that are not supposed to actually, you know, a, a sort of a, speak in public or are not supposed to participate in certain agenda. Those things were not, you know, uh, were not at play, for example, all right? So when we talk about the public sphere, it is free from any sort of power, whether political or economic power. And Habermas thereby stresses that the public sphere is not just a sphere of public political communication, but also a sphere free from state censorship and from private ownership. It is free from particularist control. So there are no predetermined preset kind of control measures to govern what we call the public sphere or to actually you know, shape the opinions that people actually you know, uh, put across. Any questions or contribution? Any questions or contribution? All right, so you've come to understand the character of the public sphere, right? The, the nature of it from the beginning, how it's supposed to be, you know, look like. Now let's go deeper into the very many characters of it in order to understand what we say as public sphere. 
and how it's supposed to be. It says that it's a general agreement, all right? So the product out of the public, uh, public sphere is that it is supposed to be a general agreement. It is an opinion behind which there is a general agreement or consensus, all right? So when the product of public opinion comes out of public sphere, it is believed that because of the, uh, the, the interactivity of it, because of the, 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 the general participation of people. Now, when that opinion comes out, it is believed that it is a general consensus or it is a, a general agreement you know, by people. Of course, that does not actually mean that within the public sphere, there are no differentials or uh, there are no other views. There could be other views, but what emerges as the opinion is the dominant view that is held by many people. So let's take, for example, you have about 100 people within a space, all right? And three different ideas have been floated or three different views of issues have been floated. What we call as the public opinion, which is the product of the public sphere, is the dominant one. The one that has, let's say, about 50% of the people or 51% of the people supporting it, all right? And that is what we call the public opinion. The one that is predominantly supported by the views of everyone or of people. That is what we actually call as public opinion. So one characteristic of a public opinion is that it's supposed to be a general agreement that people actually lay claim to, all right? The next character is, is such that it has to be rational, all right, or logical. It has to be rational or logical. Who can explain that? Public opinion has to be rational or logical. Who can explain that? One pop. Yeah, we're saying one, it has to be a general agreement. That is a consensus emerges out of the discussions or the discourse. Two is that public opinion must be general or it must be rational or logical. All right, um, let's see, Eric. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, so my understanding of it is that uh, for it to be rational and logical, it has to be whatever you are you are saying has to be uh, factual. You have to you have to uh, base your claims with a fact. That's what I think is it means by rational and being logical. Yeah, agreed. Yes, uh, that uh, to a general extent. Yes. All right. Uh, let me call some other people. Uh, Inusa. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it means rational or logical. That means the public what they, uh, they, they should talk about need to have a reason. Yeah. It, it, it yeah. must have a, a meaning. Yeah. Yes. If yeah. So the public opinion must have a meaning and reason. Yeah. Fantastic mm. point. Uh, in addition to what you know, um, you said that's great, Deborah. So hello, sir. Yeah, Deborah, go on. Yes, sir, please can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so um human beings are believed to be like rational um human beings or rational people. That means that we are able to judge or pass judgment on what is good and then what is bad. Yeah. So in this case, we are we are believed that anything that we say or any opinion or any views that we bring out on an issue it's um, like rational it's because we we have that sense to like pass judgment yeah, or have right judgment right. to know what is good and then what is bad fantastic. so that's what i have to add fantastic good point tracy your hand was up okay let's go to priscilla 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 on mute and come in Hello, sir. Yeah, Priscilla, we're hearing you. So before somebody reaches an, agree uh, an agreement, mm -hmm. the person has the right and the wrong, the pros and cons of a particular decision. And the person has also evaluated the effect a decision will be, mm -hmm. uh, the effect of the decision. So that mm -hmm. is what a uh, public sphere 
that uh, rational or logical. We just don't reach an agreement. People Excellent. think people don't upon an issue before it is accepted. That's Excellent. It. Great point. All right. Julius, your hand is still up. Right. Yes. Yes, Doc. Thank you. Um, so just um, just to add up to what my colleagues have said, I think the rationality aspect of it, I mean, uh, simply means that the, the whatever it is, whatever they are discussing or whatever opinion that they are coming up with ought to be very um, um, objective and not subjective. That is, mm -hmm. it's ought to be devoid of any possible biases whatsoever. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. And that's why, you know, the uh, first person said that it has to be, you know, factual. And uh, the, the reason being that what we consider as public opinion must be something that almost everybody can immediately acknowledge, all right? Because if it is not rational or logical, it will be left to people's interpretation. And for uh, in a public opinion to hold sentiment or to be sentimental or affected, it would lose its generality because we say that it must be consensual, all right? Uh, Evelyn, you wanna say something? Evelyn, go ahead. Yes, sir. To add up, um, it should be also analytical mm -hmm. and well organized as well. That's right. And that's why we said that uh, it, it must be factual, logical. The rationality of public sphere. Yeah. So because we if if the if the if the sphere has to lend itself to emotive, then of course. You know our levels of development or our place where we actually uh, were brought up could actually influence that particular you know uh, uh, opinion, and that means that it will be left to you know some you know minor uh, individual you know uh, kind of uh, 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 what do you call uh, subjections, all right? But if public opinion is rational, is logical, almost everybody could actually identify its character, for example. If it's right, it's right you know, within that frame. If it's wrong, it's wrong within that frame. And that's why public opinion must have you know, that rational character. You know? So that's a good point that you guys have, have said. So when we're actually considering public opinion and we're discussing what we think is public opinion, that opinion should be able to, I mean, we should be able to hold that opinion regardless of where you're coming from, you know, in order that it could have its value. So one of the characteristics is rationality, you know, or logical in you know, a character of the public opinion. And we say that the public opinion has to be, or should also reflect on general welfare, all right, the general welfare of the people. So public opinion is always governed by the idea of promotion of general public welfare. All right, who can explain that? General public welfare, public opinion must reflect the general public welfare. Yeah, Anas. Um, so I understand it to the fact that um... Um, issues, okay, issues concerning um, the public or the people are what are supposed to be discussed, okay. These issues um, should help promote the life of that people you are serving, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, Nana? Nana, come in. Sir, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, my understanding to that is that um, anything we put um, in the sphere should be for the betterment of the people. It should be something that would bring development for us. So in so doing, then the general welfare is put across. Okay. All right. Good point. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Rachel. Okay, sir. So, so um, when the people are giving their opinions, it is actually based on the things that they, if they feel that they are lacking or think or like there are things that they feel that okay this needs to be done and so um, there are also things that are related to their welfare as people in the public sphere and so that's how i also understand this point okay 
Great. All right. Um, Julius. All right. So, Doc, um, whatever thing that that would be agree will be agreed on must reflect the general well-being of of the public. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, we're saying that it has to be what we call in you know, a public good, something that actually reflect and as Cecil said, you know, uh, must benefit society. So what we call public opinion should not be injurious to the general society. It should not be an opinion that goes to worsen the plight of the people or in you know, a worsen the plight of the general public, but it must be something that is, you know, beneficial to the public. Of course, we'll come to discuss, you know, the other side of it. What about, uh, for example, on this particular point, what about a public opinion that is of these characters? Of course, general agreement is rational, but it is something that perhaps it goes against, you know, the general welfare of a certain group of people. How would that be, you know, considered? And I'm sure currently you guys have heard what is being discussed in the general public about the, the office of the LGBTIQI, you know, mm. in, in Ghana now. Have you guys been following? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. quite a lot of views have been expressed on that. How would you position or just suppose uh, that you know, with this discussion that we're having, that public opinion must be general, must be rational, logical, and it must have a general welfare of the people at that. So you are, obviously you guys are communication people, so you're certainly gonna champion the discourse in terms of TV, radio, press, I mean, general, you know, whether you're a PR or you are, you know, a journalism student, you're supposed to champion these even at your workplaces if you are a PR officer and your company has been called into question in terms of its stance against or for, you know, LGBT. Let's say you are part of the office of the president and you've been called upon to, to actually, you know, express your views on that. We have learned about public fear and the public opinion, people are expressing these views. And these three characteristics of a public fear, how are you gonna position your argument? Who can try? Uh, yeah, Evelyn. Um, I would say this particular LGBT thing is not in the interest of the people. That is the general welfare. Mm -hmm. One characteristic of um, public sphere. So this whole idea is not in the interest of the people because a lot of people have come out to share their views about how they don't like the whole LGBT thing. Okay, now I want and then general someone, agreement. Yeah, I want the someone. The whole public to... didn't really agree on oh. this. Yeah, I, I I understand your point, but I want somebody to be a little bit critical, you know, uh, in bringing quite a lot of diverse, you know, opinions in that. All right, um, I want somebody to be a little bit critical. Yeah, Rachel. <laughs> Okay, so, so um, looking at the um, constitution of Ghana, most people base their, um, their, their reasons looking at the constitution saying that, okay, our uh, constitution doesn't um, agree with this. And so this is the reason why we are not going to allow this in our country. And then most people too were asking for an amendment, but then people were saying that no, this is what the constitution says, and this is what we are going to go with. And so we are not going to amend anything and we are not going to change anything. So that's what I mm. can say. Okay, uh, great point, great point. Um, who, what if somebody throws in the idea of, you know, geopolitical stance on, on you know, homosexuality, for example, uh, which we call, you know, uh, 
uh, general values, you know, or universal values of the principle of free association of free speech and free, you know, uh, I mean, the freedom of someone's right. What if somebody throws in that argument and say globally, there is an appreciation of people's right to sexuality. And as a result, and that's what the Americans are actually pushing. And as a result, you couldn't actually say that you taking out yourself out of the geopolitical system and have your own rules when there is what we call universal value of respecting individual freedoms. What if somebody posits that particular argument? Cecil, do you want to try? Hello, sir. Yeah, in it, sir. Mm, so, sir, uh, when someone poses that particular argument, then we also look at where we also live. Like in Africa, for instance, our culture, our values mm -hmm. does not recognize same sex. Mm -hmm. So, per how we are brought up, we even if you look at the definition of marriage, um, you, you realize that we are doing anthropology. You realize that in the definition of mar marriage, some scholars did not even include same sex into it. Yeah. So particularly in Africa here, where we live, we don't recognize that particular sex. So bringing yeah. it to Ghana here, to Africa, yeah. uh, it looks so odd to us. So yeah. it will be very difficult for us to accept it because yeah. we think that it's I like alien. The, I like the argument where you started from. Public yeah. opinion is actually restrained within a particular regime all right, or jurisdiction. And, and that's one, one key character. The public opinion is within a particular jurisdiction. So the point that you made that, yes, you know, where we live, and that's where you know, the public opinion is actually governed. So you're looking at public opinion from the perspective of that you know, jurisdiction. So that was a good point that you raised. OK, Elikem. <laughs> OK, so um, my contribution is um, also um, the perspective in which um, we also have to look at it. Is, is it a short-term um, project or something, or a long-term project? Because um, if it's a long-term project, you can't say that, OK, let the same sex be sleeping around. So how, how will you be able to reproduce or have more kids you to be able to even like have the same sex sleep in the future with? So you, know, you, you could clearly say that this project is not going to help at all because if you start having the same sex sleeping around, obviously they are going to die in the future. So it means that the human race is going to be wiped off. But that, is, to... that is throwing into the realm of other conversations, whether reproduction is a function of yeah. uh, only you know men and women. Guys, just give me a minute. Uh, my mechanic is calling, just a minute. Enlarge them. But that the thing is that the thing is that the thing is that LGBT is not All right, legal. Guys, uh, sorry. Okay, so I'm back. Yeah. So um Elikem, you on the floor, right? Oh, yes, sir. I made my point, um, and then you, yes, sir. Sir, I made my point, Hello. and then you were like, Yes, sir. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Can hear you. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. We can Hello. hear you. So, we no, can, I hear you. You. can hear you. Hello, you can hear me, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, Elika, were you on the floor? No, sir. Sir, I made my point, and then you were like, it was also All right. another so conversation. We were discussing the issue of the LGBT and how that actually, you know, comes into contention with uh, the kind of uh, topic that we're discussing now. And the question I also wanted to ask: Do you think that? the characterization of the public sphere as we know it and as we're discussing it is perhaps in, a, in contention with modernity, for example, uh, because obviously the protection of the welfare of the people
could sometimes be contentious because even the UN has actually proposed or had proposed you know, uh, the welfare, uh, uh, what, what it called the uh, certain you know, uh, protection of minorities, for example, where you could actually have the, 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 the tyrant of the, of, the, of, the, of the majority against the minority you know, uh, welfare, for example. And this question that we're discussing, could it be that perhaps we're looking at, you know, a certain welfare of a certain group of people being in contention, you know, with that of the other group of people? Does that mean that we should actually then ignore, you know, the 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 welfare of the other group of people? Although that is also, or that could also be, you know, uh, paramount or necessary. Julius. Yes, Doc, I think that um, that is very true. Um, I just want to be a little bit critical on... Uh, sorry, yeah, says, I, think, I think my line was on, uh, what do you call me? Sorry, Julius, go, start again. All right. Okay. So, yes, I think that what you are saying, I kind of um, side with you, Doc. Um, just want to be a little bit critical on Inus's submission on the cultural aspect. Well, I don't believe... Um, the, the Europeans, or like, okay, let me be specific, the US, it was formerly part of their culture. And you know, culture is dynamic. Mm -hmm. So along the line, along the line or over time, it, 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 it became necessary. And you know, our, um, our needs, our needs too are dynamic as well. So I, I, I feel it became necessary for them to inculcate this culture, okay, into their system for, 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 for it to, I mean, satisfy or meet a welfare of a section or a portion of what mm -hmm. of the public. So this is my little argument. So culture is culture is dynamic as we all know. And then uh, secondly, it, it wasn't formally part of their culture. Mm -hmm. They cultivated it along the line. Yeah. Why? Because okay. a need has arose, a yeah. need of a portion of the um, public. Or the population as a rule, of which they ought to what to satisfy that need. So that is my little argument. Here. Excellent, fantastic in a submission, Deborah. Sir. Yeah. So uh, even though culture is dynamic, here, come to think of, there are some things even in Ghana um, traditions we are trying in our culture we are trying to change, but there are some other things we can't change them. Because as um, UNISA said, the, jury, um, the jurisdiction, I yeah. think I got it right. Yeah, you have to take right. into consideration. We, well, for them, they, they've been like, they, they've evolved, like they've modernized, they've gone through a lot of stages. For Ghana, we are still going through those stages, even though we are halfway there, we are still going through those stages. And we have to also bear in mind that our opinions and then our views are sometimes influenced by our culture and then our traditions and also our upbringing. And then, so, so that's what I, I have to add. Okay, great point, Deborah. All right, okay. and yeah, I'll come back to you, Gilly. Gifty. Unmute, Gifty. Unmute. And yes, 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 sir. Um, sir, I'm talking in terms of the LGBTQ like this. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, they were saying cultures are dy dynamic, but there are certain things to, when you look at, although the world is agreeing to it right now, but when you look at the implications, especially the medical implications of these things, it's very weird that actually people are now fighting for it that they should um, accept it. Because when you go into the medical terms, it's very risky. There are a whole lot of health implications on this thing. It's like, so if another country decides to agree that suicide is now, um, or even if you agree that LGBTQ should be um, legalized or anything like that, then suicide is it's not very far from suicide. You can hurt yourself and nobody should catch you after that. Because this one too, somehow the health implication is very is too much. I suppose I the argument would be that, you know, obviously there is an advancement in health and in medicine that could actually forestall that that you anticipate. What if that argument is advanced? So because we don't have medical um, enhancements or 
um, ability to solve issues, we should hurt ourselves and go for the medical. Now, now I'm saying, I'm saying, if some, if that argument is advanced, how would you, you know, counter? We're discussing whether public opinion must govern general welfare of people. What about the minority? And that's what we're saying. What if somebody actually advances the argument of value from the perspective of someone's emotions? I mean, you are talking about hurting uh, from the perspective of, uh, uh, if I should put it, physiological hurting, all right? What if somebody advances the argument of emotions? You know, someone's being hurt emotionally because they've been, you know, uh, prevented from engaging in, you know, their sexuality. What about that? Um, I think people, the thing is, emotions are emotions. There are always things that get you hurt, that yeah. even if they are, sometimes it gets you hurt. Like um, if you're a child and then you want to do something, but your parents will see that you go and get hurt. So they are preventing you, but you cry. Uh, so emotions, yeah, it's emotions. But if we let it get into people's head that yeah. it's wrong, we don't even have that understanding of okay i have the um the ability to do what i want anyway it's because it's in people's head that it's okay to be gay or to be um lgbt lesbian so they already have when they start having actually not to say that but science has clearly stated that women find other women attractive and that's normal but to go to the extent of having sex with another woman that's the abnormal part so if it's in the childhood that oh um it's okay for me to have sex with another woman that 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 is the problem but if they know that it's okay for me to be attracted to a woman but not to that extent okay Julius, that's also you, okay great great point i gave to Julius, were you the one coming in yeah, Doc, I was just about adding that I now understand why um, Ekufuado, I mean, Ekufuado's response some years ago when he was, I mean, asked on, um, when he was asked a question on this particular issue, mm -hmm. and he stated that it is bound to happen. So I think this kind of, um, this discussion um, of culture being dynamic kind of links to what he said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, human. Okay, say, hmm. but um, I think comparing our culture to that of um, the Western world is different because you see, they were the ones who introduced religion to us, mm -hmm. specifically the, the Christianity. Mm -hmm. But in, in some ways, we practice this more than them. And so adding the religion to uh, our society, I think it's, it's, not, it's not something we should allow. Okay. Anas. So, so, okay, so I me, mean, I feel that, okay, we'll be on an emotion, let me put it that way. So if, if, if this particular group of people, okay, wants to uh, behave in a particular way that is socially not accepted, so they have to be dealt with because it's unreasonable. Yes, although you might have um, affection, okay, you might have, you might <laughs> see you. opposite, yeah, you might see your opposite person or partner so attractive to you. It shouldn't like go to the extent, so it's demolished now. <laughs> Do you want to <laughs> sleep? Like, okay. yes, yes, okay. it's, it's but, true. You see, so the conversation that we're having now, the, the discussion, we shouldn't lose track. What we're saying is the character of public, uh, public opinion or public sphere says it has to be an opinion that's general, that's a consensual, all right? But it has to be rational. So the, there must be a logical you know, discussion or logical flow to it. And then it has to be general welfare of the people. And, and we're saying that, could this be a problem? Because currently as we're dealing with, we're dealing with the general welfare of a certain group of people, all right? Call them minority because that's what it is. <clears throat> you can say that the characteristics of public opinion is in contention with this particular issue that we are discussing. All right. Okay. Um, Evelyn. Evelyn. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah, sir. Yeah, Evelyn. Sir. Yeah, we're listening. Hello. 
Yes, sir. With this issue we are discussing, it wouldn't really work or hold water because it is not rational, it is not logic. Based on what um, reason are we pushing this agenda for it to stand as a nation, for we based leaving on, the inhabitants of the nation on, to practice on, such a thing? Based and on the right. Is it a, based on the right of according the, to the, the right to the, the constitution, it's criminal. According to the constitution, it is criminal. Yeah, but the constitution for us to engage in promotes, such, an, such an activity. Yeah, but the constitution promotes it, the freedom and the right of every individual, isn't it? The state actually is supposed to protect that. Exactly. But even when you follow the issue at hand, you realize that the registrar general didn't even approve upon such an association. Okay. All they right, went to the register general to register that particular office. And it wasn't even. All right. Uh, Julius, uh, one line. Oh, Nana, Nana, come in. Sir, sir, please. Um, you were saying we should look at the welfare of the minority. And I wanted to ask what of the welfare of the majority? Because as much as we want to uh, 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 um, think of the minority, I think public opinion, we all agree that it is about the majority. So why are great we point. focusing on them? Yeah, great point. That's a great point. No, we, we're not focused. I'm trying to let you guys you know, be able to defend the idea that public opinion is supposed to protect the minority and majority. What about the interest of the minority as well? And I think you've made yeah. a very Hello, good sir. Point. Yes. In response to that, I say majority is largely okay and well to do. So there's no need to give them focus or attention. This minority or the minority group that needs their attention now. Hence, uh, these discussions. But there are also citizens who have rights. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and how, is, how, is, how is ensuring that the rights of the minority uh, affecting or infringing on the rights of the majority? Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, so that's a very good debate. So that's one thing that, you know, we, we do as academics, how we look at, you know, the contention in theories. And this is exactly one of the contentions as we're discussing. There's a public interest and everybody is actually talking about it. From when you look at the logical flow, uh, we're looking at it from perspective of our jurisdiction in terms of culture, in terms of religion, but also in terms of freedoms that our constitution actually prefer. Because don't forget the constitution prefer freedom of the individual and the freedom of association, uh, which means that these two sets of, you know, or these uh, values as we're talking about are not in contention. So, when it comes to the character of the public opinion or the public sphere, the public is supposed to brood over issues like that and then come up with a consensus. But currently as we speak, there is a huge you know, a kind of a void or a huge gap between what we know as the general agreement rationality and then the, the welfare of a group of people. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, unmute and make your contribution. Um, so say the LGBT people are actually basing their arguments on the constitution because yeah. they are saying they have yeah. the right to, yeah. to, to move around as that. That is why the right brought of up the and uh, the freedoms yes. of the individual. Yeah. So yesterday I was actually watching an interview where um, they were asking them why they prefer to be um, lesbians or gay. And then they are saying that the constitution allows them to do that. The only law which is not, um, the only illegal thing is they are not supposed to have um, sex um, at, uh, what do you call it? Like with the anal sex and all. But then apart from that, they are allowed to have any kind of, of intimacy. So apart, you can, and you cannot prove that two gays or two lesbians are actually having anal sex. So that is what they are basing their arguments on. So it looks like they're using the law or the constitution against us. That is what they are doing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. 
Eric. Unmute, Eric. Yeah. Yes, sir. sir. Um, like, I want to understand something. Uh, 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 public opinion, for instance, uh, would you classify a, a group of people demonstrating as, uh, as, as a public opinion? If we ask ourselves this question, a group of people who are demonstrating, if you can't classify that as a public opinion, then I think uh, uh, if it's not in general agreement, then I think this LGBT thing is also not uh, it's not also not in uh, in the context of public opinion because it's just a, a, a section of people who are trying to trying to uh, voice out their their grievances. Yeah, don't forget uh, this theory had been in existence for so many years, and that's why we're looking at it contention with modernity. That if you actually look at it from the modern perspective would you say that the character of the public opinion or the public sphere must be altered and that's the kind of conversation we're having now would you say that the welfare that the public opinion is supposed to protect is supposed to be the welfare of the majority alone what about the welfare of the minority and where actually the minority's welfare perhaps is actually also crucial important for example, if we take men and women, who are the minority or who are the majority in this country? Now, would you say that the claim of women, for example, if women have to lay claim to, you know, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, polygamy, it, uh, do, do we use polygamy or we use other words for, for women who seek multiple partnerships? What, yeah, what that is we? polyandry. Polyandry. Okay. So what if women also seek that, but of course they are in the majority in this country, would you also consider that as a public opinion? Do you understand the point I'm making? So yeah. the, the question I'm asking is, are we at a position where we probably have to broaden the definition and the character of what we call public opinion? Because currently as we speak, it's in contention. Do you get it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the that's the conundrum I want us to address, in order that we could actually approach some of these, you know, kind of uh, 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 discussions with a very critical perspective. So the idea that someone is in minority does that actually exclude them from the position of the public opinion, and how do we then treat that? Because there are times where some issues may have to transform, or we may have to have an entirely different view to it over a period of time. Because if you look at the conversations about human right, women's right, you know, women's uh, right to job, right to social, so, so, it has transitioned over time. At some point, it was actually seen as a minority debate. But of course, women are in the majority. All right. So these are some of the contentions that we have to ask ourselves. Gifty. Gifty, you're mute. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's not always that the, the minority is wrong, but sometimes in the context of the LGBT like this, sometimes you realize um, in the US, after legally making it legal, the agenda, and you can't, you, because you've made LGBT um, legal, you can't say no to someone trying to change their gender. Mm -hmm. And because of that too, you realize some men going to females' bathroom. Some, so you realize the right of someone is eating into the, the right of another person because someone else is not feeling comfortable at all. Mm -hmm. You're right. With so the, um, seeing a man in his in the bathroom, a female yeah. bathroom, but clearly a woman. So you look at the long term there. That's okay. And then you ask yourself whether the country is ready for those things. <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, who else lifted their hand? Uh, Elegant. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so that was what. Um. That was the kind of point I was trying to drive at because when you look at some of these um instances or situation, you clearly see that say I do am boy. Your question about from say there's nothing like right opinion and what what to say this thing you clearly see that. Is not going to lead us to. Yeah, Alika, we've lost you. This, 
things can't like come into our say when we have um like a lot of problems to do and then this LGBT service we should just abolish this. Uh, <laughs> okay. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, Susan. Yeah, just just a quick one. Uh, still related to the conversation we are having. Mm -hmm. I remember when the late uh, President Rollins was buried, and there was little to no representation of Rotarian uh, display at the mm -hmm. funeral. A lot of people were worried. Mm -hmm. They were saying all sorts of things. Ah, this man is even a chief uh, in Rota region. But what we saw was largely Akan, and a lot of people had issues with it, including myself. I mm -hmm. thought it wasn't uh, an appropriate representation of who the person was, mm -hmm. you see? And this is a similar situation we are we are trying to deal with here. Yeah. Are you trying to say that because largely uh, we are all, because majority of us are straight, mm -hmm. uh, we should not in any way look out for these minorities. Mm -hmm. To a large extent, uh they also are citizens they pay taxes they contribute to the growth and development of the nation mm -hmm. how in in any way does their lgbt rights affect you or your pocket mm -hmm. or what you put into into your mouth every day elikem i would like to know uh-huh rachel you want to come in Mm, say, 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 not yet. Say, I'm still gathering thoughts. Again, again, who made you moral police over how somebody decides to use their penis or their vagina? <laughs> say, you know, um, say, 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 these are the kind of things that say we'll be saying, and then and we realize that in the long term, you are going to even look for a job, and then they'll ask you of your gender, and then you tell them, oh, because I'm not gay, because I'm not lesbian. No, you say, oh, okay, Elikem, because Elikem, you are not part of true. That is not true. Let's advance the conversation. America, do we, say, do we say, see... You know in America, say, you know, you know in America, there was this guy, um, he work, um, he's a South African photographer. So he went, um, and then I think he was going to work um, in then this American company. So they asked him about his gender. And then he was trying to say, oh, I'm not part of this and this. So because, and then they told him um, clearly in the face that because um, he's not part of them, they can't give him access to what? Some of their documents and like, um, say, their oh. credentials. Because Elikem, that be is one of out of many examples. So yeah. currently, who is that, being stoned? Go to let's, Jamestown let's, and see let's how Let's advance the stoned. conversation. Do we that see... Do we see, working down our, do, we see, do we see state failure? in terms of some of these conversations that the country does not bite the bullet in terms of discussing hard issues in order to ready the people for some of these advances. Do you see a failure of yeah. this in that? Yes, yes. The yeah. state I'm, has yeah, all I, I, I believe so too, because uh, largely we have uh, run away and keep running away from having this conversation as a nation, mm -hmm. engaging all stakeholders uh, I am aware that the Council of States is uh, is fairly representative of uh, different groups and different religions. Mm -hmm. I, I think it is one of the platforms that can help uh, have this discourse without <clears throat> without leaving out the minority group. Else, it will become uh, what it is as we see now. Largely, people deciding for minority because they believe. Uh, they are majority, and that is the way the world or Ghana should go. Yeah, I, I've, I've held the belief that the country had always shunned away from tough issues, you know, and it come back to haunt us because if you look at some thorny issues such as language, for example, you know, uh, currently as we speak, there are undercurrent of, you know, uh, what we call displeasure in terms of people thinking the country is becoming too arcanized, you know, and uh, too much tree dominant. Now, what is the position of the state? We don't know, yeah? Currently, we are also discussing LGBT. What's the position of the state? We don't know. Now, there are quite a lot of strategic, if I say strategic, long-term social value issues or value issues that the state has shone away from having that conversation. And that character has been something that has been with us for a long time. And once we then get head on with the issues, it becomes problem, you know. Of course, some of these issues are thorny. They are very, very thorny issues. 
But in, in some countries, that conversation is hard. I mean, they have, they, they, they sort of use the platforms, the media platforms to have some of these conversations and it advances society. I remember, you know, some of the conversation about whether God exists on BBC, uh, which was a BBC, uh, uh, what do you call it? Is it? Um, I've forgotten the, the program, uh, but it, uh, no, it's not had, had, had issues. I, I, I've forgotten, big issues, I think, big issues on BBC. And they discuss some of these thorny issues. Now, in this country, Ma? it is difficult to have such conversations because the state itself is not prepared to have conversations such as that. So there's a state failure in us, you know, approaching head on or getting head on to some of these critical issues that define society over a period of time. Uh, Deborah. Yeah, so, so those state bodies say, we have to remember that they are also humans, just like us. And then their opinions, and then they, they are like school of thought. It's been influenced by our old tra uh, traditions and then our culture. So we can't like put all the blame on them all the time. We have to also take into consideration their cultural orientation. Some of them, they are still like having this old, 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 like, school of thought so that's why we, we are not able to face such big issues in this country yeah but you see there is a state mandated institution like uh, uh what's their name the one that does a civil civic education you know what's the name the national the NCC. 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 exactly yeah. these are these are state mandated institutions supposed to lead us into some of these big questions and they frame you know the values of the state Currently, as we speak, the right to human freedom of all sorts are actually a universal freedom enshrined in world bodies, including national constitutions as well. How do you actually contend with that position and the position of your culture? It must be a conversation and people must actually express their views and then the state adopts what is called the general public opinion. Currently, we don't have that. Rachel, you want to say something? Yeah, sir, and I and and I also think that um, when people are making arguments, they always base their thoughts on religion. Everything is always religion. They don't um, go maybe straight to facts and and things that they see, but then they try to use religion as a way to cover the whole thing. Mm. On radio, on TV, um, you 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 sometimes be expecting people to speak on facts and then be 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 a for you like someone sources. is saying, um, Jesus Christ died for our sins, and then you uh, you 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 can't actually see how they are trying to um raise yeah. the issue. So I think if we should maybe leave religion out sometimes and then look at the issue the way it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, we'll be able to understand the issues and understand okay. some things. All right. Great point. All right, Eric. Yes, sir. Uh, you were saying well, when it comes to critical issue, I think I think it's relative because what a critical issue might be probably because uh, that might not be our critical issue at the moment right now. We might probably be facing a lot more. A, a critical issue like water problem and all that. So I think when you say uh, uh, we don't face, we don't face Eric, water. Water is not a value issue. I mean, these are daily, you know, uh, operational uh, needs. We're talking about so, we're talking about issues of value, issues of what defined a group of people. That's the kind of conversation we're talking about. We're not talking about your daily needs of water, etc. That's not the kind okay. of conversation. Yeah. All right, Nana. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Sir. We sir. we are still we are yeah. still even struggling, yeah, we are still even struggling to define our history as a people and conclude on who founded Ghana and what's not. Yeah, yeah. And these are critical issues. I mean, these are hard not critical issues that the state has to confront and bring conclusion to them. But we, we shun away from those issues, we shun away from discussing them. They surface, you know, we make noise about them and within a short period, it goes away. Currently, as we're speaking, 
this LGBTQI conversation would just dominate the media space for just about a week or two. After that, no conversation, they will exist. And before you realize, people start taking the law into their own hands, either maiming them, killing them, etc. The state must start having tough conversations such as that, and then bring some conclusions to them by way of legislating, making it clear, educating people, or by way of banning it, making it clear, educating people. We should have those conversations. Yeah, Nana. Yes, sir, please. I was asking, um, how do we know this is a majority? Is it through the media? Because if it is through the media, mm -hmm. then we would always fail because sometimes what the media projects to us, maybe is backed by the ideologies that media or the ideology that media holds or mm -hmm. probably the ownership or something. Yeah. So if maybe the owner of um, Peace FM is an example, is a gay or something, mm -hmm. then they are telling us that they are projecting, no, gay is good, gay is good. Then yeah, right. yeah. state takes that as the majority. Then we are failing as a state, we are failing as a country. So I think that I just want to know how yeah, the right. state wants to know what is majority and who is the majority. Yeah, right. That's that's the part of the public sphere, public opinion will come to, you know, we'll come to analyze those things. How sudden, you know, interests are promoted you know, in the face of public opinion, but it may not necessarily be public opinion. So that's a, a very good point that you raised. Okay, let, let's proceed. Um, so uh, the next character is that it has to be related to all aspects of life, which we're talking about now. It's not only politics, but it's social, economic, or cultural. And it opposes morality. Again, that's another contention. You see, so we say the public opinion uh, within the public sphere what we agree on must uphold morality. Public opinion always upholds the moral values of society. It is never against morality. So again, can we say that this is a point of contention? You know, who, who's morality and who defines that? Again, that's especially in a culture of diversity like ours, you know, would you actually say that the tribes that actually practice you know, um, uh, uh, what do you call, same family, I hear, I hear in some cultures, you know, uh, people can marry their, their wife's sister, for example, all right? People can even marry their brother's wife when they die, or, or they can actually sleep with them. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, so in, in such a cultural milieu, what is morality and how do you actually, you know, defend that particular practice? and how that, that actually come into contention with somebody's you know, uh, need to, to actually practice a different kind of sexuality. How would you actually you know, define these things in terms of moral, moral you know, uh, uh, grounds? It, it becomes a very contentious you know, issues, for example. All right, again, um, it, 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 public sphere or the public opinion should not be an imposed opinion. And that's what Nana was actually talking about. Public opinion is not an imposed opinion. It is generally held consensus opinion and is the result of growth. So what if somebody is actually hiding behind that and imposing opinion using some kind of uh, power? As, as Nana actually pointed out, if someone owns a media house, and not only one media house, but about two or three media houses, and using that platform to promote their own interest, you know. Uh, and as we know in this country, political parties or political interests actually use what we call the serial callers, fund them, give them mobile phones, and get them to be calling into programs. How would you establish that it's actually a majority free of, you know, economic power, for example? And then, of course, neither destructive or no negative. So we say the public opinion is never destructive and negative. It is positive in content because it always represents the public welfare. Based on right to freedom of speech and expression, the right to freedom of speech and expression is the most essential condition for the birth of a public opinion, basis of democracy, real sanction behind laws of the state. So these characteristics, clearly you can see the wedge in them, isn't it? Uh, any, any, any views before we proceed? 
Any views, any questions? Yeah, Nana, your hand is still up. No, sir. Okay, so put it, put your hand down. All right, so we can see that the characteristics as we have discussed, if we just oppose it on the current discussions of uh, issues in the public domain right now, you would see a lot of you know, confrontation. And the question is, how do we, especially in the, a cultural milieu of diversity, you know, most Western cultures have actually fused as a result of the, the uh, modernization and, and, and development over time, they have almost like a seamless culture where almost everybody eats pizza and things like that. In our situation where there's a cultural milieu of diversity, all right, different you know, cultures, different perspectives, very much you know, ingrained in our lives. How do we you know, position some of these debates? I think is a matter for discussions and a very critical view of it. So if we have to take you know, a public opinion, public sphere in its context as we're actually discussing, we'll find problems you know, when we transfer that into our systems. And that's where I think some of us have to, you know, not, of, not some of us, but all of us have to actually think about when you're having these conversations in the media, how do you then position this within the space that we are in? And how do you justify issues like morality, issues like values, whose values, and how do you actually address some of these you know, contentious issues? I think it's some of the right questions to ask, all right? Okay, so the public sphere facilitates public participation through discussive processes of deliberation, and that could legitimately influence political decision-making. And, and that's what we're having now, the kind of engagement that we're having now. So currently, I'm sure our political you know, uh, authorities are, are in some sort of dilemma uh, because the society is completely sort of against the majority, so to speak. But of course, they have a duty to also protect the minority. And then of course, they have the duty to the global you know, universal values. So how do you then solve these issues and make sure that you can bring it to finality in terms of political decision-making? I'm sure it is something that you know, would uh, sort of uh, crave the attention of the president and his cabinet. And I'm sure they would you know, come out with a sort of conclusion the direction that this country would have to actually take when it comes to issues like that. And um, it's not only about uh, what do you call LGBTQI, but I'm sure there are quite a lot of other issues you know, in terms of you know, cultural issues, language. Recently, when there was a letter from uh, one of the schools that Ghana was being phased out, I think there were quite a lot of reactions. Who, who followed it? Yes, yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, I did. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a, a school, um, Valley View University's uh, basic school. Yeah. And for one of the levels, they are struggling to get uh, a teacher to teach Ghana. Mm -hmm. So uh, due to that, they would want to face out the teaching of Ghana language mm -hmm. and then let them study Akan instead. And it was met with uh, unpleasant responses. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people now within the Ghana community uh, and I know this because I am on a platform we are Ghana on Facebook. Mm -hmm. you know, they are they are thinking about how they can address this because yeah. already a lot of people do not speak their language well, and and if they are not going to get the opportunity to transfer or orient the younger generation on how to speak their language, it will be a problem for them in the very near future. Yeah, I think I've seen an initiative where they are launching an online portal for God teaching. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. But you see, and that's the point I, I bemoan. This goes beyond guns, all right? It's a big national issue. So for example, the, the institutions mandated you know, for education, including the GES, what's the position on that? What's the state's position? You, you get my point? Because it's not only Ghana. In Zima, for example, it's completely wiped out, all right? If you go to Inzima now, 
or if you go to uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, the uh, what's uh, trying to recollect. There are some places that when you go there now, it's only three people speak, but that's not their language. All right. That is, I was in Ho some time ago. Uh, in fact, uh, when I was in school, my senior brother is, is in Ho, so I used to go and visit him. At that time, when you go to Ho, I couldn't, I don't speak ever, so it was difficult for me. Recently, I've been going to Ho, and a lot of people are speaking tree. I don't know whether some of you have observed it. All right. Those of you who are from the area, is anyone from Ho? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you taken notice of that piece? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please. I, was, I, was, I was so surprised because when I used to go to Ho when I was uh, very young, you know, from school, I had to go and visit my brother, you know. It, it was very typically ever, like, you know, most people. Just last two months, I went to Ho before I went to England. And everybody is, is speaking tree, I mean, predominantly. Then I was like, wow. You know, and not only that, I was in Tamale. All right. Uh, again, before I left for England, I was in Tamale. And quite a lot of people were speaking tree. I've been in Tamale. I was in Tamale in 2005. You couldn't hear a tree there, but now they're speaking tree. Gilbert. Uh, around where? Uh, Tamale, you know that Gilbert, Gilbert will tell. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, come, 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 come. I've I'm, said something. I'm in Tamale yeah. right now and I can confirm it. It is true. Uh, it's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and see, the point is that that. Uh, yeah, you do you want to say something? Yeah, I'll say um the reason why um some um uh, how do you call it regions, let's say the voter, the votarians, and they say they not they, they speak the three languages because of most of them have moved to Accra. And in, here in Accra is hugely dominated by um the accounts or let's say the account language, even though it's a gun community. Mm -hmm. Most people speak the tree. So if you know Fabanas Mabakra, I now I'm, I'm now able to speak the tree. They go there and they start communicating to themselves okay. with the tree. Yeah. I went to I went to Ho not too long ago and I could see uh, most of them were speaking the tree language. But about two years ago I went to Ho and immediately you get there, they face you with their language. They start speaking mm -hmm. there ever, mm -hmm. whether you understand or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that, that's the case. I'm making. Today you I go mean, there, and most of them. Are I go, I go to my own Takradu, right? So I think it's because of migration. Yeah, I go it's to because my, of migration. I go, they to my own village. I go to my own village in Takradi, near Takradi, and you hear people speaking tree. You get it. So, so the point I'm making is that the institutions that are mandated to, to sort of uh, not protect but to advance the values of the state. These are realities. So what is the state doing about it? We must have those conversations. And just like what the LGBT we're talking about now, all right? The state must initiate processes to take an action. Are we going to nationalize tree or are we going to enforce, you know, so to speak, you know, people speaking the other language and how are we going to enforce that? Must we actually initiate certain processes to reverse the issue, or must we let it go on and then assert this tree speaking? That's the, that's the decision that the state must take and the may must take now. Go back. So um, I don't, I, I wouldn't put um, the work only on the state. Families also do play a role. I know a family, a, an account family who has trained its, um, gen, uh, its children and put it away to speak only the English language. A crappy me pants on tea tree. Now the, the so point is um, the, the realm that you are also play. Now the realm that you are you are actually you know uh, bringing in is the free will of people. You you don't you don't actually advance society 
by putting responsibilities in the hands of families. It, it's actually shaped by statecraft, all right? So yes, we're not saying that it is the state that has to actually you know, enforce people to do that, but we're saying that the state must put processes in place that could indirectly direct people to, you know, to participate, if you understand the point I'm making. Because- Yes, sir. Yeah, because you couldn't go to your families and say, don't teach your kids English or teach your kids only in Zema, no. But the state puts systems in place so that indirectly people would align, you know? Because how are you going to enforce families to actually do that if the state is not taking the initiative? You can't do it. Yeah, yeah. sir. I think we can learn a lot from South Africa as well. Mm -hmm. uh, their national anthem has all of their languages imbibed into it. So everybody feels part and parcel and valued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK, great point. So, so my point I'm making is that we, we, as a nation, we must start looking ahead and say, OK, what are some of the fundamental issues that are actually confronting us in terms of values? Of course, the bread and butter issues, they will be with us forever. Uh, but we should also start having critical conversation on certain you know, value issues and how they confront us now and in the future, all right? See, if you go to, uh, if you go abroad, England, America, or whatever, you see Ghanaians, regardless of where they're coming from, speaking tree, it's not only in Ghana, all right? I remember in London, we used to work in a, a, a warehouse called the French FCK, the, the designer brand, FCK warehouse, a French connection. When we go for lunch, all Ghanaians, all Ghanaians, regardless of where, and we're somewhere, ever somewhere, coming from the north, from where, fancy somewhere, we were all speaking tree at lunch, all right? The Nigerians could only speak pidgin because they, the Igbos and then the Yoruba people, are completely do not understand each other. All right. So they speak uh, what do you call uh, 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 pigeon. So one day our former was asking, how come that all of us, uh, that is the Ghanaians, we speak one language, which nobody understands, but the Nigerians, what they do is only speaking pigeon, which somehow they can pick, you know, one or two from it. Do you get it? So it is becoming the reality now, and the state must take a stand on it. The state is shying away because of political reasons. I mean, clearly no party wants to put them, uh, their heads forward or put their foot forward to say, I'm going to tackle this issue. But we must tackle it, you know? Unfortunately, the state institutions mandated to fashion out some of these value sets have been politicized or partisanly politicized. And so they're not able to take responsibility because it shouldn't take the office of the president to initiate. It's supposed to be a state institution, GES or uh, uh, what do you call the NCC or what those people, in order that you can differentiate partisan from statehood, all right? But unfortunately, because we have typically made these you know, institutions part of the political structure, if a GES you know, boss decide to initiate that, it's going to be a MPP initiating it. But it's not MPP, it's, it's a GES. Do you get a point I'm making? You know, so yeah, yeah, we, yes. we have created the problems ourselves in order that the state institutions are not able to function, you know, in the way that they're supposed to be. And we are always getting confronted or we're being confronted with top, top, top critical issues, and we're not able to solve them. Anyway, so uh, somebody says, if it's made a national language, what happens to the, uh, is a Gruny and Northern language ever in Zuma amongst others? Exactly, these are the kind of things that we're talking about. You know, the political aspect of the issue, whose language must be made national? But the point is, the reality is, everybody's speaking tree. So, if you would not allow tree to be made national, what are you doing then to protect your language, to make sure that it's spoken? You know? So how come tree was agreed to be taught in school? I agree with Gilbert that families should teach their kids 
their local dialect because socialization begins from home. But how are you going to legislate that? You know, you cannot legislate families to do that unless there's a state intervention. Okay, anyway, uh, any other views? Someone has a view to share or I should go on? Yeah, hello, sir. Yeah, sir. sir. Uh, in the last quarter of uh, last year, I came across uh, a post, mm -hmm. uh, Ablade TV. Yeah. Posted that uh, some man was saying that uh, in order to preserve the Ghana language, they should sack all the Akan speaking people from the town <laughs> or ensure that business is transacted in Ghana. And I said, no, that is not a healthy approach. And for me, they um, legislate that. Exactly. You know, yeah. and for me, um, we can all do better by supporting the. Uh, there is a bureau of languages in Ghana that produces literature yeah. in the different languages. We can support and resource them to help preserve the languages and through their books, share uh, amongst the various regions with the language that is dominant. Mm -hmm. So that in school, and even if others from other regions who probably migrate there would like to learn, they can learn the languages. If we are having festivals, we can uh, speak the language or have sessions that showcase uh, the language and help people learn. If it means uh, supporting people to put together dictionaries in the local languages so that we can all learn and encourage others to learn the language as well. Mm -hmm. uh, to our benefit that, for example, because I am, I am a Fanti, but I speak Ghan well, mm -hmm. and I do not complain uh, that my gun is better than the fancy or anything. When I move into a zone where the language is dominant and I can learn or speak it, I try and speak it and gel with the people well, and it helps. So we need to encourage the sustainability of these languages mm -hmm. and also encourage each other to learn the languages so that we can do business in their respective languages when we move to their places. Excellent, great point. Okay, thank you. Margaret. Um, okay, sir. So, so with the learning of the language, like this, this is the case whereby wherever you school, you know, the local language is taught there. So when you school in Accra like this, Ga is made um there's made as a subject to be taught. When you school in this Akan or Fanti community, they have a crapping tree and everything, this fancy language whereby they they teach it them, they teach it. So the locality or the society you find yourself in ensures that you are taught that language specifically. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself outside the world and you realize they speak different, like that's where you tend to learn that language to benefit you in terms of business or something. So here in Accra, I'm in Tema, like this, and I learned Ga. So maybe I have been able to go outside Accra like this. I have to learn that language in order to assure myself with other to enable uh, enable to transact in business or stuff. So with the language barrier thing, wherever you find yourself in, ensures that you learn that language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the problem is about the usage of the language more more than the the teaching of it, uh, because most of us were taught French, but we didn't use it. So what happened? We lost it. Uh, Elikem. Yeah, so my contribution um, also boils down to the structure of the nation. Mm -hmm. You clearly see that, say we don't have a structure, there's nothing laid down, okay, and let's do it this way, let's do it this way, and mm -hmm. to benefit all of us. So that's why we have all these problems. So we don't have right. a world laid down structure um, to curb um, the situations. So yeah. that's my contribution. You're right, fantastic point. Okay, great. So yeah, um, yeah. somebody wanted to say something? Okay. So uh, the emergence of public sphere, as we were talking about, you know, the history of it, um, Habermas, you know, uh, people, I mean, we're talking about its emergence in Great Britain, for example. And that was as a result of the three, three events between 1695 uh, to 1694 to uh, 95 were crucial. The founding of the Bank of England the end of the licensing system and then the introduction of the cabinet government. You know, um, the, the understanding is that some of these events actually contributed to the, to the formation of the public sphere because they brought about, you know, uh, conversations uh, because people 
expressed in a, uh, some concerns and had to actually bring the opinions on. Uh, obviously, the argument is also challenged. Some people also feel that it was, you know, to do with other, you know, uh, uh, jurisdictions such as, such as uh, France and Germany, for example. And the literature actually goes on to highlight the 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 history of uh, public sphere. Uh, the institutions uh, of public sphere, coffee houses, and coffee houses. I'm sure you know coffee houses. These are social gatherings where people meet to drink coffee and then to have conversations. So when you read the history of public sphere, it was more of uh, people gathering at coffee houses and having a chat on national issues. Print culture you know, also promoted public sphere uh, because people had to write uh, feature, feature articles, all right? So when um, the, the print you know, were in circulation, uh, you call it, you know, some of them were you know, religious press, like the Catholic voice, for example. People would write opinion pieces on issues and people would discuss saloons, normal saloons, barbering saloons, women's saloons. These were the areas where people would share. Because people spend time you know, in the saloon, you know, they engaged in conversations. But one crucial stuff is that it would public sphere, as we said, you know, people didn't have to know people's identity, you know, in order to express opinion, because then it becomes, you know, constrained. Because if you have to express opinion and someone had to know your 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 background or where you are from, that you know bring hesitation because you probably will be expressing opinion on some issues that borders on identity, for example. So with the character of public opinion, you didn't have to know, you know, or to engage in public opinion, you didn't have to know people's identity, you know, because that in itself actually served as constraint, all right? And debating societies also promoted, you know, public opinion because people then, you know, uh, were in, 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 in those societies to promote thinking, to promote, you know, ideas, to promote diverse views on issues and to bring forth what they think about society, you know, freely. So these were the kind of institutions that actually promoted you know, public sphere. And as you see, institutions in inverted commas, meaning that they're not institutions as we know them as in a formal structures, but spaces that actually promoted you know, what we know as public sphere, which in this case, if you have to position it in modern times, what would you say are some of the institutions that are promoting public sphere? Because obviously these are the, the beginning of it. Anas? Um, so the media. Yeah, the media. Uh, you can actually break them down, you know. Uh, so who else? Who else want to add? Anas, you want to say something? So that's all, that's all. That's okay. All. Who else want to add? Public sphere. Uh, Jackie. Um, so also social clubs. Oh, sorry, Jacqueline, right? Jack, is that your name or someone's phone? Jacqueline Johnson. Same policy thanks. You know, they run, you know, research and come out with these findings that kind of influence public's um, understanding of certain issues. We can take some of the research that are done around elections, which kind of make people okay. feel or react a certain way to okay. some issues that so, are so, Yeah, so opinion polling and all those. Okay, posters, you say. All right, uh, who else? Who else? Yes, we're looking at the modern, modern times, you know, the, the, the development of public space. Julius. Doc CSUs. CSUs, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, the community, you know, uh, organizations, you know, great point. Yeah, yeah. Who else? We're looking at, you know, the development of public sphere from modern perspectives. Yeah, Joel. The, um, the schools, the churches. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, okay, Julius. Right, Doc. So, um, traditional and religious leaders. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. So. All these kind of platforms, social media, you know, all these platforms are uh, kind of uh, the structures that are actually promoting, you know, a public sphere. 
you know, making sure that people can express their views, you know, uh, devoid of, you know, those constraints. So you read and you look at the characters of the coffee houses, for example, Richard Sinnott actually talked about the fall of the public man. You know, anyone sitting in the coffee house had a right to talk to anyone else, to enter into any conversation, whether he or knew, he knew or the other people or not, whether he was you know, uh, bidding to speak or not, it was bad form even to touch on the social origins of other persons when talking to them in the coffee house because the free flow of talk might then be impeded. You get it? So the idea of the public opinion, the reason why it was you know, free from other constraint was that you didn't have to know people, otherwise the identity alone can impede their thinking. So let's take, for example, you are in a, in a, in a particular space, people want to talk about you know, the Votarian issue that we had. Uh, 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 Mama, Papa V or whatever they call it, all right, during the election. And let's say, for example, the conversation started and somebody asked your name and said, where are you from? And they say, you're from Volta region. Immediately, someone is likely to censor what they want to say because they feel that you probably will be offended. Or maybe you may either, you probably may be supporting the, the position of the, is it Papavi or whatever in his team. And so if he has anything to say, he may, you know, kind of pull, uh, I mean, uh, he, he may, he, the person may, uh, you know, kind of constrain themselves from saying it. And that's why we say the public opinion within the public sphere was devoid of these things, identity, in order that people can freely express them, the, the, themselves and the positions that they, they held, all right? So these are some of the characteristics that we say different opinions and a measurable liberty of declaring them is necessary to enliven conversations and to improve it. But men must develop the talent of contradicting without displeasing. All right, Nana. Sir, sorry to cut you. Sir, please, I wanted to ask, can there be a public sphere without a public opinion? Because in my, in my area, for instance, or mm -hmm. my constituents, for instance, mm -hmm. like right now, and um, I don't know what is what they are talking about. So in this society, I can say that there's a society without public yeah. opinion, right? So yeah, with what you say, yeah, the sphere. So with yeah, go on, go on. So the sphere, the sphere is just the space, and I think mm -hmm. public sphere sphere institutions shouldn't be public opinion institutions rather. I'm a little bit confused. Even though yeah. we use it interchangeably, I feel the sphere is just the space and the yeah. institutions rather facilitate the opinions. Okay, the institutions are actually in inverted commas, not institution as in, but we're talking about structures that actually supported the development of public opinion. You get it? Oh, yes, I guess. Yeah. So, so there can't be a sphere with an opinion. So, so the, the, the general position is that the, the opinion is a function of the public sphere, all right? It's a product of the public sphere, all right? So whenever that sphere is, or there's okay. an issue at play for conversation or for, for deliberation, the result thereof is what we call the opinion. Are you with me? Okay. Yeah, so the sphere can exist without yes. necessarily having a product out of it. Because if you go to the saloon and no conversations are, everybody is quiet, all right, and nothing is said and nothing is agreed on, suddenly there's an existence of that particular sphere, but there's nothing out of it. Are you with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Evelyn. So, Sir. Yeah, let's listen to you. So my question is, with a public sphere, does it have an identifiable space or it's an imaginary space? Okay, no. It, see, the point is that in the beginning, as we saw, the characterization of the public sphere are actually geographical spaces, all right? But right now, as we speak, 
you couldn't actually define public sphere within the geographical boundary. Because right now, if you look at the way social media works, all right, you couldn't say that public sphere is actually restricted to geographical boundary because all of us are making conversations or contributing to a conversation. People could actually be contributing from Nigeria. Are you with me? So in that, yeah, so that means it doesn't have an identifiable space. Yeah, in terms it of can the take more, place anyway. In terms of modern times, the definition of the public sphere might have actually changed or have changed because of you know, advancement in technology, for example. All right, and that's why I was bringing in those questions, those critical points that, can we actually say that the public sphere with its product of a public opinion supposed to actually benefit or be of a benefit to the majority because clearly there are some other minority issues that are we call importance, do you get it? So we could look at the transitioning and what we call the dynamics of the public sphere in modern times. And so you couldn't actually restrict the sphere to a geographical boundary. So I want to clarify something. So in that context, means that public sphere does not have an identifiable space, right? Yes, in terms of modern times, you couldn't actually say that it's geographically bound. Okay, so, so my next question is, um, public, can public opinion regenerate public sphere? When you say regenerate, what does that mean? Okay, so let me say, in our discussion, you were like, mm -hmm. it is through public sphere that we have a product called public opinion. Yeah. Okay, so can one's opinion regenerate or generate public sphere where people begin to discuss issues um, circulating? Yeah, I mean, the, the, it's, a, it's a discussive, uh, it's a deliberative, you know, uh, kind of process, isn't it? So you could have an issue that only came from you, but as the point of, you know, deliberations, it becomes general. Do you get it? So yes. once it becomes general, that is a product of in a particular sphere, you know? It doesn't matter where that particular, you know, conversation took place. But as a result of that particular you know, uh, conversation, you were saying that the group or the people involved in that have actually generated a particular sphere. So as, as you know, somebody actually put it, if someone writes a, an opinion all right, in the newspaper or a feature in the newspaper, that's the beginning of a particular you know, uh, uh, public opinion because people read it and they would express their views perhaps writing back to the in editorial or whatever. Now, within that particular boundaries, all right, you could actually see it or call it as a sphere, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other question or uh, contribution? Sir. Jackie, your hand is up. Is it Jackie? Sir. Yeah. Evelyn. Evelyn, put your hands up if you want to make a contribution so that we can actually you know, follow it. Yeah, come in, Evelyn. Sir, so, so does that mean that only topical issues form public sphere? What when you say topical, what does that mean? Debatable, like discussable things. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, generally, people will not actually put up issue for conversation if it's not of some some relevance, you know, to, to general conversations. I don't think that your sexual life in the individual could be a national conversation, would it? So it must be something that is of concern to other people. But of course, there are times where maybe one individual's issue becomes a national conversation. For example, having been battered, you know, uh, uh, or uh, brutally assaulted can become a national issue and generate into maybe domestic violence conversation, all right? So that can actually initiate, but certainly it must be of a, uh, of a broader you know, interest. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, of course the print culture, as we said, you know, also contributed you know, to you know, uh, what do you call the public sphere and then public opinion as we we're talking about, because people had to write 
you know, uh, opinions, people have to write, you know, features. And those things were actually discussed, you know. And the saloon cultures we have actually, you know, talked about, debating societies, etc. So, I mean, the general understanding is that obviously in modern times, we see how, you know, the sphere has actually, you know, kind of transformed. Uh, if you take, you know, uh, a radio, for example, the platform itself, it is, but of course we have certain individual platforms, you know, uh, like uh, political talk shows, we have fashion shows on, you know, platforms, etc. All these are, you know, individual spaces that promote a particular, you know, kind of opinion or particular view. But in modern times, you know, there are other kind of, uh, uh, what do you call, forms of, you know, spheres that we can actually identify, you know, including uh, social media spaces, WhatsApp platforms, people actually, you know, expand opinions there. We have, you know, other, you know, uh, spaces that we can actually think about, you know, even within a you know, certain, you know, uh, kind of a uh, group of people. I think the rest of it is more, you know, the issues of the, I would call the theory itself. Of course, I, let's look at this one. Habermas, in the original approach, focused upon the link between the institutions and the practice of mass public communication and the institutions and practice of democratic politics. The approach focuses on the necessary material resource base, which is intellectual, otherwise knowledge skill for any public sphere. Third, Habermas dis distinguished the public sphere from both state and market, which we have actually discussed, that it must be free from all these powers, all right? And then changing conception and opinion, the public sphere, you know, about, you know, uh, Habermas talked about a changing conception of the public sphere as a geographical metaphor, as we have just explained, a place where people gather to, to the consequence of certain forms of communication, wherever and whenever they take place. Features, as you look at it, is dispersed, legitimacy, restless, in the nature of the place to the nature of the communication itself. And then second, instead of the deliberation ideally resulting in consensus and sovereign public, Habermas now embraces the contested nature of the public life. That's what we're discussing in the earlier on. I was asking you guys whether, you know, the, the welfare must be of the general or, or of the majority or even the minority. And as, as the point notes that even now, you know, Habermas himself actually appreciate the idea that the characteristics of the public sphere must change and reflect you know, modernity, including you know, other people such as minority groups, not necessarily you know, uh, what do you call majority groups, for example. All right, any questions or contribution? Any questions or contribution? Okay. What time are we supposed to finish, Julius? 10, 10 o'clock, Doc. Okay. I think we could even have some time to spare. Okay, guys. So that is um, and the, the point about public sphere and the public opinion and how it is generated. I think there was a slide about, you know, some influences. Okay. So Graham claims that the usual structure of public communication are changing. This change is characterized by, okay, that's the point we make a reinforcement of the market and the progressive destruction of the public service as the preferred mode for the allocation of cultural resources. By focus on the TV set as the locus for privatized domestic mode of consumption by the creation of market divided between the information rich and it. Okay, so these are some of the you know, uh, structural changes that you know, they talk about. But the question about, you know, how do we determine whether an opinion is free from market or political forces is crucial one, especially when we know that, you know, individuals actually possess the capacity to, to push certain agendas. You know, who can actually, you know, address uh, those difficulties? How do we curtail that? How do we prevent the idea that individuals could actually use the public sphere to indeed push 
you know, opinion that are not so public, but are actually, you know, are born out of, you know, economic and political power. Who can, who can actually give us an idea? Doc, please, I'm not clear on the question. Okay, so I'm saying that, you know, I, I don't know who has, has asked that question. I think it was Nana about, what about those who own, you know, TV stations or media platforms and saying that if the majority, because we say the public opinion must be a general consensus. And her question was that is the general consensus from the perspectives of media? And if that is the case, how do we then be able to determine whether a certain opinion is free from economic or political power, i.e. it is not someone's agenda that they are trying to promote as general public opinion? Are you with me? Yes, yes. And how do we prevent that? The idea that people can use their platforms to promote individual agenda as public agenda or public opinion. Any idea? Any views from anyone? Yeah, Evelyn. Sir, I do not believe that it is always the case that the media um, push the agenda of um, some people when it comes to public, public discourse. Probably they are sharing their own idea. They are telling what they think about that particular opinion. You're, you're not working so during that. We're struggling to follow you. Yeah. You have a discussion with the public sphere. That is where we come out with a general um, uh, idea or addition. You know. Let me try. Yeah, we, we can't hear you. You must change your position. Uh, who else want to uh, contribute to that point? How do we protect that? The promotion of individual interest as public interest or public opinion. Any views? Okay, so because of that, you know, if you look at some of the uh, Western jurisdictions, ownership of of uh, uh, what do you call press is very very restricted. All right, and I'm surprised that in Ghana we are able to allow people to own platforms, multiple platforms. All right, in, in England, for example, you couldn't actually own a newspaper and own TV at the same time. Your ownership will be reduced, all right? So for example, you have a, a Medoc, you know, owning B Sky B, all right? And then owning uh, what do you call the Sun newspaper. What the, the Labour Party did was that at the time, they slashed his ownership of B Sky B so that he couldn't have the majority ownership in there. So his ownership in the B Sky B was reduced, but he owned the uh, what do you call the the Sun newspaper. Why? Because his daughter was the I think the the chairman or the CEO of of the of the networks, and they could use it to promote you know family agenda, for example. So the government had to slash you know, their ownership in the sense that they are not able to influence public discourse with their own, you know, uh, uh, what do you call, interest. And, but in this country, uh, we have allowed individuals to own platforms, print, print I mean, TV, radio, et cetera, without any restrictions. And that is critical because people could actually use that as a way of promoting, you know, uh, or as means to promote, you know, public, um, I mean, individual interest, you know, under the guise of uh, uh, what you call public opinion, because then they could, you know, uh, resource people to actually 
contribute to certain issues, you know, even though they may be against that, you know, but because of some economic benefits, you know, the idea that people could be given funds, could be paid to advance some, some kind of opinion. And, and so I think that the state must take, you know, uh, kind of initiatives to restrict, you know, ownership of, of media spaces, you know, in order that, you know, the issue that was, you know, uh, pointed at uh, would, not, would not actually occur or uh, could be reduced in that sense. Evelyn says, uh, I don't believe that media owners use the media to push their personal agenda, really. I believe they use it to give their individual opinion about issues. But we see a lot of evidences, uh, Evelyn. Even if they use it to that to push their interests, citizens debunk it and question it. I don't think so. I think I don't think it's as easy as that. Julius. Yeah, Doc, please. With the submission you just gave, don't you think if we do that, we are trying to tread the path of censorship? No, it's not censorship. It's not censorship. Censorship is about, you know, trying to determine what the media reports and does not report. It's not about ownership. Okay. What, what we actually have done is that we have given power to individuals in terms of ownership. I mean, how, the, how, how can an individual own a TV, own radio, own print, own, you know, uh, what do you call portals, internet uh, uh, web portals, for example? Technically, what you're doing is that you're controlling or you're allowing the individual to control what the people hear and not hear. And you can talk about media ownership in this country in very few hands, isn't it? Yeah. What if these people actually gang up and control what we know? Which, which is possible, all right? So I think that the state must take you know, measures to restrict ownership, you know, uh, uh, what do you call, in this country because people have complete ownership of platforms and we don't know what they can use that for or we actually are even witnessing what they can use that for. Kennedy Japan sits on his, on, on his TV show for, for so many hours, isn't it? Now, he, yeah. He can decide that the show be extended, isn't it? So a show of 30 minutes, he could actually decide that they extend it to let's say 45 because he's on a show. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, he does that. Yeah. Evelyn. Yeah. <clears throat> you said there should be some re um, restrictions when it comes to um, ownership of the media. Mm -hmm. But the constitution also says that there shall be no impediment to the establishment of a private press. Yeah, but we're not saying that. So how do you come no. about that to ensure that such a thing happens? No, but we're not saying that they should restrict them from establishing. We're saying that we should not let them own, you know, to a certain extent. That's, that's different interpretation, isn't it? Mm. Sir, no, it, quite, it looks the same. How? How does it look the same? <laughs> if you are saying they shouldn't own, it's like me owning is like I am, you know, bringing up a media firm. So they yeah. should restrict it. We should, we it's should. the same restrict, as me establishing a media firm. People, right? We should restrict people from controlling what we know and what we don't know. But what we must know and what we shouldn't know by making sure that they do not have ownership of all platforms. Do you get it? Because we're talking about a uh, general, uh, we're talking about public opinion, we're looking at the consensus here. And I think, I don't know whether it was Nana who asked that question. What about people hiding behind general uh, public opinion and promoting personal interest? You get it? Right. Deborah, come in. Yeah, so Evelyn, I think what Sir is trying to say is that if you like own a printing press, that's it. You don't have to own a radio station or television station attached to that printing press you have or attached to that newspaper you are running. So that I think that's what um, Sir is trying to say. Yeah, because then you are controlling, you know, you have too much power and you have too much control over what we should know and we shouldn't know. In. All right. Who else wants to contribute? 
Okay. All right. Anyway, so the main characters of today's communication, it's media uh, mediated nature. Of course, we've discussed that uh, in the previous, you know, uh, class, uh, last two yeah, classes. Okay, guys, we should call it a day. Any question or contribution before you go? Hmm. Yeah? Hello, sir. Yeah, Chrissy. Uh, how um, Oman FM is presently even being used mm -hmm. is a case enough to put measures in place to ensure that people who are in the helms of affairs do not have access to mass media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I in mean, that regard, in yeah. terms of owning it and using it to champion their political agenda. That's right. I mean, we have, we have quite a lot of issues in this country that sometimes I wonder whether we do not, you know, or we're not aware of some kind of, you know, uh, uh, systems that structure society. For example, you know, anti-competition trust, all right? If you look at, let's say you own, you own a, a bank, all right? And, and, and uh, this, this guy's bank, what's his name? Uh, Best Point, which, is, which belongs to Despite, all right? Also owns a bank, Despite also owns a bank. But he owns, in addition to the bank, he owns a radio station, a TV station, an internet portal. What do you think is the competition between you and him? The state of the competition. You are definitely not in competition, are you? Not at all, sir. Yeah, because he owns media platforms that he would actually use it to promote his businesses. You don't own one. So you're out of competition. Now, in, in countries where antitrust actually works and competition laws actually work, Someone who owns a media platform would not be given full access to own a bank, for example. Even if you own, there will be certain laws to prevent you know, undue advantage. But in our case, most of these guys own these media houses. They own banks, they own, uh, uh, what, do you call, uh, what do you call, pure water companies, so many other interests, all right? Of course, the nation would think that there must be uh, employment because of employment. But in, in actual sense, there are so many other competition laws that they are flouting, all right? Including controlling what we should know, including controlling you know, our minds, for example. So in countries that are serious, you know, people who are in politics cannot own you know, media platforms. Because these are completely different. I mean, completely, you know, uh, 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 I don't know how to put it, but two, two uh, uh, aspects of social life that actually govern us and then control us. So if you actually put in into the hands of a politician, a media platform, you can definitely anticipate naturally what is going to happen. It's going to control you, you know. But our country hasn't got those laws. I mean, I don't know when we're going to actually have that. But these are some of the things that we must actually, you know, kind of uh, uh, concern our minds with. How we do not put power, absolute power, in the hands of people to control us is exactly what we're doing now. The opposite. Yeah. Any other views? Say. Yeah. Nadia. Please. Yes, uh, please. Is there any advice you'd like to give us with regards to the assignment? Which assignment? The one on the political campaign. What advice do you do you need? Do I require? Because yeah. I'm, 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 I'm. Uh, first of all, we are not like so um, familiar with politics. I would say so how to go about it are you saying it's, your entire class is not familiar it's a group work isn't no it? no i'm saying that i'm saying this this is a, a new um course to us uh, what we believe to be politics might not be what you believe because you are well versed in politics no 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 so it's, I'm an just asking, it's not it's not it's an assignment not not out of place of what you have been taught 
you're actually speaking as though you haven't actually been taught anything. But you have no. been taught, you have been taught, you know, on oh. uh, some, some topics, isn't it? So okay, that's what we have been used, we, uh, it's been used to, to, to ask you to perform a certain function. So okay, thank you. Don't perform anything other than what you've been taught. Sure. I mean, follow what you've been taught and then create. That assignment is even too cheap. I think if I had if if I had my own way, there would have been other constraints in them. I, I was I telling uh, Laurentia that we needed to ask certain things, but she was of the view that we do it in the exams, other than this one. This is okay. very very you know. Easy, easy peasy for you. Can you see your hand okay. is up, or it's an old one? Sir, sir, please, I want to ask that, can there be a situation where the government can regulate, even though people can own? Can you see your line is gone off, we can't hear you. Hello? Can you see? Yes, sir. Yeah, we couldn't hear you. Come again. Hello? Kwesi? Okay, your line is gone. All right, guys. Um, so we'll call it a day, right? Thank you for coming. Sure, right. Doc. All right. So I'll thank see you next time. All right, thank you. Sure, doc. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you.